In this video, I'm going to speak about three different planes that exist on a network device. They include management plane, uh, control plane, and user plane. Also, you should know that user plane is all known, also known as uh, data plane or forwarding plane. So let's just start with management plane. How we access the device, how we manage the device, how we upgrade the device, how we monitor the device, these are all responsibilities of management plane. Most of the time there is a command line interface based on what you have, for example, um, like what you use to connect to a Cisco switch or a Cisco router, for example, most of the time that is uh, something like secure CRT or so it's super putty for example or some people call it putty i don't know or so let's say terra term these are some of the examples that you use to connect to uh, the command line of the device itself and sometimes you use a graphical user interface such as a web page or let's say a rest api um, call that you just send to the device and receive it and show the result on a page whether that's an application or a web page uh, for web API or stuff like that we have some very good examples the user interface of SC-WAN ACI or let's say Cisco ICE all of them are examples of a web page that you can connect to the management plane of the devices and manage them and you know see some information about the health of the device see some counters and uh, the amount of traffic that goes through the device and and see some other stuff through them also you can use them to configure the device which means that you are working with the control plane through the management plane but management plane is uh, specifically talking about the managing and how you manage the device so that's going to be the management plane so let's go to control plane. What about this one? We are talking about the flow of data. We are not talking about the data itself. We are not we are talking about the management of data. What we are talking about is the flow of data that goes between network devices. So let's say that we have multiple routers and they are all connected to each other in this fashion. So from router 1 to router 4, I have two different paths. One goes through router 2, one goes through router 3. I want to send my data through router 2 to get to router 4. That is how I decide to do this. That is controlling the flow of data. That is what I'm doing through the control plane. Or well, let's say that I have some protocols. Let's say most of the time that's going to be OSPF or ISIS or let's say even EIGRP. All of them are uh, protocols and some more protocols that we can use. They decide how we are going to send the data through what link to what destination. All of them are going to be examples of control plane. Now, control plane, of course, has some specific data related to itself. Let's say, for example, OSPF sends some hello messages. ISIS and EIGRP do the same thing. They have some adjacency information. They keep some information in their databases. All of them relate to control plane. So whenever we talk about control plane, we really mean how we are going to control the flow of data. Now, the last one is going to be the actual plane that does everything that is dictated to it. So we call this data plane. Okay, what do we have in data plane? Let's say that I have, again, these four routers here, and they are connected in this fashion. And I have decided that there are paths to the destination, and I'm going to send the information through those paths. So what I'm talking about is I already had a database of information in my control plane. Now I have put some of those information, some of that information, into a routing table. Let's say my routing table has some information about where the destinations are and how I can access it. I can even create an extra table which is more efficient and better than this. That would be, for example, Ceph table. That's going to be my forwarding table, as a matter of fact. So 
both of these are going to be created by control plane but actually they are going to work in data plane what i mean by that is they are going to uh, tell the ASICs on each one of these devices where to put the data for example based on the information of the Ceph I know that if I want to send some packets to router 4 I can send it this way or this way and both of them of course are going to take me to the destination router 2 knows that this way I will take it to router 4 so router 2 is going to send the data distinct for router 4 on this specific interface and all of those of course are stored in here and they have just applied to the ASICs of these routers now what kind of protocols work in this uh, layer or in this plane we have protocols such as IP, TCP, UDP stuff like that all of them decide how we are going to send the packets, data packets to the destination. Now, now that you know about data plane and control plane and management plane, there are two things that I want to add to this so that you have more knowledge about that. And that's the process of learning. In learning process, you know about the destinations. Now, this process of learning could be done through control plane or through data plane so examples of control plane learning you already know a lot of these things you know that uh, routers have some adjacencies through those adjacencies they send and receive some information about the prefixes that they are connected to so that's going to be one of them let's say for example uh, OSPF is an example that populates a database of information about the prefixes of the destinations and then it is going to share this information with all its adjacencies so that's going to be one way of uh, populating the data let's say that there are some other types of you know population let's say for example what we have in BGP eVPN and uh, this is for example for layer 3 information this one can share layer 2 information as well so here we are talking about prefixes and with this information we can populate a uh, routing table and through that the forwarding table this one for example talks about MAC addresses that we can populate it and send it to the other side this one for example is very very uh, useful when we send MAC addresses through VXLAN uh, networks to other devices, the VTEPs that we have there. What about data plane learning? What we are having, for example, in here is such a something like MAC address table. MAC address table is going to learn the MAC address of the frames that it forwards to the other side. And that is going to be learned through data plane. Also, some other information could be gathered through a data plane and that is called the data plane learning so we have control plane learning we have data plane learning and now you know both of these which one is more efficient and which one is better most of the time data plane learning is efficient but it is not necessarily better one of the reasons is most of the information that you collect here is going to be cached and it has a time to live so when the TTL uh, you know ends that piece of information is going to be removed let's say for example we have a switch here the switch is connected to a computer if we turn off this computer then this computer is not going to send any frame and this switch has very limited amount of memory that can put uh, MAC addresses in that so it says that I'm not going to keep the information forever I'm going to keep the information for 300 seconds for example 5 minutes if I do not hear any frame from the other side for 5 minutes I'm going to remove it and I'm not going to keep it in my MAC address table so the information is going to be cached what about control plane uh, learning the information is going to be permanent unless there is a new calculation so anytime you have a calculation of the topology of uh, everything uh, then that is going to you know maybe create new results maybe confirm the old result 
and put everything in the database and the database is going to be valid unless there is a change in the network that is going to affect us so that is going to be more uh you know uh, valid than what we have here that's going to stay in the database for longer time so most of the time you prefer to go with control plane learning unless there is a reason that you do not really want that and you go with data plane learning so that's all about control plane management plane and data plane